mostly call him Gerard Butler, but that drives him crazy. His name is actually pronounced Gerard Butler, and so he likes to go by Jerry so that we get it right. With his thick Scottish accent and manly looks, Jerry has become a leading man of epic action adventures and romantic comedies. But it's been a bumpy road to superstardom for a guy who quickly earned the reputation as one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. Born in 1969 in Glasgow, Butler moved to Canada when he was just six months old. But following the breakup of his parents only two years later, returned to Scotland with his mother and two siblings. As a child, he loved watching movies and fantasised about becoming an actor. Inspired, he joined the Scottish Youth Theatre, where one of his first stage roles was playing a street urchin in Oliver at the age of 12. A gifted student, Butler graduated at the top of his class and enrolled in Glasgow University's law program, where he became president of the school's law society and earned an honours degree. Uncertain about his career choice, he took time off and moved to LA, where he lived the Hollywood party lifestyle and tried his luck in acting, appearing as an extra in The Bodyguard. Unable to hit the big time just yet, Jerry returned to Scotland and began a two-year law traineeship with an elite firm in Edinburgh but found himself bored and unhappy, still dreaming of performing. What happened was I, I graduated as a, a, um, with a law degree, uh, with an honours law degree, and then I did a diploma in legal practice. So I studied law for five years. However, when I trained as a lawyer, um, when I was actually working as a lawyer, um, I was, if I'm being perfectly honest, fired a week before qualifying. So that's the way that that affected my career because I was fired, which therefore um, left me open to the universe to have its wicked way with me, which was to lead me into acting, which is what I wanted to do anyway. Two days after being fired at age 25, he moved to London to begin his acting career. While working odd jobs to pay the bills, he landed the lead in a stage adaptation of Trainspotting. Butler soon made his film debut with a supporting role in the 1997 historical drama Mrs Brown, opposite Dame Judi Dench and Billy Conley, before landing the lead role in Wes Craven's Dracula 2000. But unfortunately, the movie flopped with critics and audiences. Next, he starred as a barbarian in the epic American TV miniseries Attila, and Butler's performance as the lead warrior was so impressive that directors now pursued him for more action roles which led to a role alongside Christian Bale and Matthew McConaughey in the 2002 special effects filled dragon slaying Reign of Fire. Still in action mode, he co-starred with Angelina Jolie in the 2003 Tomb Raider sequel, The Cradle of Life. Then producer Joel Schumacher cast him in a more sensitive role as the lead in the 2004 screen adaptation of the hit musical Phantom of the Opera. And yep, Jerry had to sing. You know, it's hard to sum that one up in a couple of words because it was so many things. Uh, it was uh, challenging, it was quite nerve-wracking, it was also beautiful and, and uh, you know, I had so many moments in that movie where I really, you know, what, what, as an actor, as a performer, singing, uh, just what I was part of that I knew I would never get again in my career, so it was, it, it always remained special in my heart. Many criticise Jerry for being too handsome to inspire fear. And sadly, The Phantom of the Opera didn't prove to be the star-making vehicle he'd hoped for. Regardless, Butler continued to pick up more roles in Dear Frankie, The Game of Their Lives and Beowulf and Grendel. But he would soon be cast in a film that would make him and his abs an international star. Based on Frank Miller's popular graphic novel of the same name, the ultraviolet 300 told the story of 300 Spartan warriors who battle with a massive Persian army and Butler took on the lead role of the Spartan king, Leonidas. It's weird because you, you get a feeling about something and literally they said, have you heard about our film 300 that we're doing? And they just said the word 300 and I thought, what a cool title, what was what, this about? I almost knew immediately that there was something fresh and different about it. So when, when, when they explained the story and then, then showed me the, the, the comic book and immediately, you, you know, you, you see the cover and you just see these guys marching and you think, Oh wow, what is this? The testosterone fueled 300 went on to make over $400 million at the box office and proved Jerry's box office power and sex symbol status. Next, he changed gear, starring opposite Hilary Swank in the romantic drama P.S. I Love You, and then with Jodie Foster in the family friendly adventure Nim's Island. But it wasn't too long before he was getting his hands dirty again, this time a little closer to home in the English crime caper Rock and Roller 
and Jerry was excited by the chance to work with writer-director Guy Ritchie after enjoying his earlier work. They're the kind of movies that as an actor, I was just starting acting when they made Lockstock and you kind of go, why wasn't I in that? I wish I'd been in that movie. So suddenly things go well enough that you get the chance to, to be in one of those movies and you go, you know what? what, what? At the time I was busy actually, I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it, but I thought I would kick myself. If after reading the script, I thought I'd kick myself if I if I if it turned out that I didn't do this film. So I, I did everything in my power to make sure that it happened. So what exactly had influenced Guy Ritchie in casting Jerry as the wise guy one two in Rock and Roller? Because he had bulging biceps and sexy abs in 300. He's a good-looking boy, so I'm told. Butler kept things action-packed, starring in the futuristic flick Gamer, and then found himself behind bars, starring opposite Jamie Foxx in the crime thriller Law Abiding Citizen, which he also produced. It was an interesting experience because I, I, I had never done it before, but it, there came a time where I felt that um, when you're getting a lot more say in, in movies, um, which movies are going to be made and people are making movies on your back, then you think, well, you want to be a little more involved and you want to get the credit for it. In Law Abiding Citizen, Jerry plays a dark character, a prisoner who tries to take justice into his own hands. But that almost didn't happen, as he was originally cast as Jamie Foxx's district attorney character. I think it's perfect the way it turned out. I think him playing that character, you know, I want to see Gerard Buller kick some ass, you know what I mean? And it just, you know, it just seemed right for him, you know? And, and especially when we started, it was like perfect. The, the pain that he felt in, the, in his eyes and, and just his whole spirit, just a great job, you know. Jerry continued his role diversity by signing on to star with Katherine Heigl in the romantic comedy The Ugly Truth, which takes a humorous look at how different and similar men and women really are. This script was so incredible. The characters are perfect. You know, one's coming from this extreme of femininity, you know, and feminism, um, and, and being incredibly uptight, and one is the opposite. You know, he couldn't be more loose and irreverent and, and, and not giving a shit obnoxious. And for those two to meet in this context of, of entertainment and in that world um, is just magic. The Ugly Truth saw Butler play a crass, crude, and womanizing TV host who offers dating advice. Jerry's fun and energetic personality definitely rubbed off on set with his director and co-star. Gerard Bartley can tell the filthiest jokes in the world and still be the most charming man in the world. I mean, he can get away with murder. I would love to know what that thing is that he has because uh, he can get away with anything. He can get away with anything. He's fantastic. He's a really good time, and Jerry is... Uh, just super full of energy, just a, a lot of laughs, a, a really big heart, and um, he just nailed those jokes one after another. So it made it really easy to react the way you would react if some guy was saying that shit to you. So. Next, Jerry kept in touch with his romantic side but with a twist of action, teaming up with Jennifer Aniston in The Bounty Hunter. He loved performing his own stunts, and once again, he kept the cast and crew laughing with his practical jokes which included flashing his butt. <laughs> Jerry's just funny. He's, that's sort of what's so great about him, is he's absolutely disarming because his, you know, here comes this gorgeous, you know, Scottish actor who, you know, you think you should be afraid of, and he's really just a softy. Just this fun, sweet guy, kind to everybody, and really collaborative and really wants to, I mean, he's so committed to the work. And, uh... So it's great. He is a joker, but you know, he's, he, I mean, he, on one hand, he's 14 years old. And on the other hand, he's incredibly disciplined. And he comes to the set with a lot of ideas. He comes to the set knowing what he's, what he's got. And he's got a really good barometer of what's working for him and what is. He's got a lot of stories. He can hold court. You know, he, uh, yet this acting thing doesn't work out. He could be the Scottish Mark Twain. With a larger than life personality, nice guy attitude and joker antics, Jerry is a born entertainer. Through his work, he likes to move people and make them think about their own lives. I love to entertain. I love to try and tell all different kinds of stories in all different genres. And there's nothing, and really not from, even from an egotistical point of view, but there's just nothing, that, there's not a better buzz than to know people are entertained. And Jerry's efforts were awarded in 2009 when he was named Variety Magazine's International Star of the Year at the Dubai International Film Festival. 
I'm hugely honoured to. I mean, I came all the way out here to, to shut up. Um, <laughs> to, to um, you don't want to hear this, but do you? Like, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't win a lot of things. I won a raffle when I was at school, when I was about <laughs> nine. Um, so no, it's a huge honor, and it's great to be appreciated for, for the work that I've been doing, because I've been working very hard over the last couple of years. 10 years of hard work had taken Jerry Butler from theater and small film roles to the heights of Hollywood. So which of his roles does he believe was the turning point in his career? You know, you could go right back to your first theater job or the first lead you had in theater to your first lead in a feature film to the first film I got in Hollywood, but the one that gave me, without a doubt, the most exponential jump would be 300, because it just was a different level of, of movie, and it, it was a, I was very happy with my performance. I was blown away with what they did by the movie, and then to see how much people dug it and got into it and how well it did. And with a list of contrasting roles already under his belt, does he see himself slowing down anytime soon? It keeps it interesting, you know? better having the audience wanting more than having seen too much of you. I don't think the audience could get sick of seeing too much of you and your abs, Jerry. Well, us female fans anyway. Let's hope this is just the beginning for the rough and ready, practical joker, Scottish action man, Gerard Butler. Stay tuned to Starfix for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.